and uh, we want to do that and get all that out of here and changed up. How do you like the songs today? Victory in Jesus. All right. Now, I was thinking, man, what a great theme. We got victory in Jesus. And, and then as we look down at it and going on down the list, we have surrounded or fight my battles. There's victory in Jesus. And when we have victory in Jesus, he'll fight our battles. And I was thinking about that earlier and standing in his love because you and I can stand in the love of God and what he has for us. And then he is the one who says who we are. Isn't that great? Not us. We don't decide that. You know, in my lifetime, I'm preaching on a tough passage this morning. I'll tell you why it's tough. I've been working on it all my life. Uh, I can't say, no, that's a lie. I've been working on it. When I was a teenager in my 20s and my 30s, I was too strong-headed, too arrogant, and too prideful to really do what these verses say or even try to do them. But after that time in my life, I've really tried to do them, and I'm still not good at them. So we're going to be looking at passages of Scripture in Luke the sixth chapter, then going to Matthew the fifth chapter, and back to Luke the sixth chapter. Going to be going through a whole lot of verses today, but I want us to think about what really they're telling us. And it's talking about Jesus is telling us how that we are supposed to be with one another. Most of our lives are based upon how, what somebody else has done for us. That is not the way it's supposed to be. You and I, because we are children of God, are supposed to act godly. No excuses. No reason except acting godly. And you say, well, they said it to me or they did it to me. Well, you whining little baby, get over it. If you're a Christian and you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to tell you God will make a way for you to be who you are supposed to be in him. Don't worry about everybody else. You know, when I was a little kid, I used to make fun of fat people. Guess what happened? Um... I, I, can, I was a skinny kid. I weighed 133 pounds when I graduated out of high school. But I made fun of a lot of fat people, and man, did I suffer for it. When I was younger than that, I used to make fun of kids that had acne. You know, they had all those pimples on their face and stuff and all those things and all those. And, and I thought, man, there's, you're just not washing your face enough. That's what I thought. Guess what? I got through that age of puberty. And I broke out like everything. Now listen, folks, I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in circumstances. But I do believe many times what we say comes around to bite us in the tail end. I think God does that and because he's warned us about it. And even a matter of fact, one of the passages we read today, one of the verses we read today, really talks about that. So when I was young, I... Man, I want to tell you something. I had to watch it. And I still say things that I shouldn't say. You all know that. I shouldn't mention names, but I'm going to. Don't everybody look. But Miss Cherry, today, the, the door at the gym wasn't, was locked, and I didn't go around and lock it. And, and she had to walk all the way around the building and come in the front door, and she was sitting there trying not to huff and puff. And I just said, well, maybe the Lord knew you needed to have a little walk this morning. And that's the reason he went up there. And so, lo and behold, I was waiting for some news about one of our church members. And I usually go up and down the steps and downstairs and back. And when I got back, then I got the news and I had to do it again. So I had to walk twice as much as I usually do in the morning. Anybody knows of me, that's my only form of exercise all week long. And I only want to do it once. And I ended up having to do it twice. And I told Miss Cherry, it's because I said that to you, making fun. You know, and, uh, and she, it's just the way it happens. Everything in my life that I said I wouldn't do, I end up doing. Everything I've told God that I wouldn't do, he makes me do just like that. It's the most amazing thing. I told God once that I wasn't going to live on an island. I told my wife, in the presence of God, she said one time, our 10th anniversary at a church we were at, they sent us on a 10-night, on a 11-day cruise out of, out of uh, Hawaii. And I said, uh, you know, uh, she goes, boy, don't you, because it was winter in Alaska. And she goes, don't you wish we could just stay here? And I said, no, I'm never going to live on an island. And I'm going to say this, and it just want to get back at me. I always said, too, that I'll never work for a state convention because... That's like a horse that's too old to run. They put you out to pasture. 
And so what did God do? He planted us in Alaska, I mean in, from Alaska to Hawaii for eight years uh, on an island at first working for a state convention. I told God one time after pastoring a church with First Baptist on its name, I never wanted to pastor a church with First in its name again. I'm going to tell you, God will make you do it. It's weird. Never had any idea. Many of you know that four and a half years ago, whenever it was, more than that now, that a preacher revival here, people were asking me, hey, would you consider becoming a pastor of our church? And I was kind of rude. I just kind of said no. And I said no a long time until finally my wife made me pray about it. And now I've been here almost four years. It'll be four years in November. God does things in our lives we just don't always get. But here's the one thing we need to get. When you're a child of God, you and I need to act like it. You and I need to live like it. And you need, and I need to try to be who God wants us to be. We're going to start off in Luke 6, verse 27. In Luke 6, verse 27, it says, Jesus is saying, But to you who are willing to listen, you hear that? To you that are willing to listen, Jesus knows that we're not all willing to listen. Do you think that I preach up here every Sunday and know that everybody hears everything I said? I know they don't. I know they hear what they want to put against me. I know they hear what uh, they want to hear. And the stuff that they don't want to do, a lot of times they're not willing to hear. I understand that. I've been preaching 50 years. Good night. You understand that I'm slow, but I'm not that slow. He goes on to say, I say, love your neighbors. Or excuse me, that wasn't neighbors, was it? He says that later. Love your enemies. Whoa, wait a second. Love your enemies. He's not just saying love the ones that are around you even if you don't know them. He is saying love your enemies. The ones that are against you, the ones that don't like you, the ones that can't stand you, the ones that don't want to have anything to do with you, the ones that are against everything you stand for, you and I are supposed to love them. Do you think that's very easy? I guarantee it's not. He goes on to say, do good to those who hate you. Wait a second. I got to do what? Do, wait, this doesn't make sense. And it doesn't from a human perspe perspective. But you and I that know Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior and have him in our hearts, you and I do not look at things from a human perspective anymore. We look at them through a spiritual perspective because we are spiritual beings in Christ. He goes, love your enemies, do good to those that hate you. We can stop right there. I've already failed. But I want to tell you something. It doesn't mean we're not supposed to be trying every day, all day long. He goes on verse 28, bless those who curse you. Oh, this is a good one. What? People are cursing me? Let me tell you what usually happens. Somebody comes to us and says, you know what so-and-so said about you? Here's usually what happens. Well, you just wait till I see them. This is where we get out that thing and I always talk about, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind. There's nobody in here who can stand giving pieces of their mind away. Well, I'll straighten them out. Well, I'm going to teach them well they'll never do that or say that to me again they'll never be that way to me again i will not let it happen and let me tell you something you're out of the will of god as soon as you say any of those things because god's word says bless those who curse you pray for those who hurt you well i want to tell you something being a pastor is not always an easy life i know a lot of you think it is it's not always my wife and i were just talking this last week and she says there's a, I'm going to go ahead and share this. I probably wasn't supposed to, but I'm going to. She goes, people don't realize that I've seen in our ministry the people that have came up against you and you've been quiet and just prayed and never fought back. And God either took them out of the church or took them out of this world. That's just not one or two. That's a lot. I'm not saying be careful, but my wife can throw an ax and hit a bullseye but my God never misses a bullseye. And you see, when you handle things the way God wants you to handle them, God will take care of them, and you and I don't have to worry or fret about them. You say, well, God's too slow. I could do this a lot faster. Well, you're too slow at getting 
what God's trying to get through to you. In verse 29 it says, if someone slaps you on the cheek, and we all hear this, offer the other cheek also. You know, some of us, like me, has always been a smart aleck. I've only got four cheeks. The fifth time they're getting it. Some of you take a while to get that. If someone demands your coat, you hear this? If someone demands your coat, give them your shirt also. If they demand it. Does that make sense? You see what God's talking about here and Jesus is saying to his people, this is not making sense as human beings. This is making sense from God telling his people how to live godly and holy lives before him, having spiritual lives, not worldly lives. He goes on to say, give to anyone who asks. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get it back or get them back. Can you believe that? Now listen, we live in a world today, and I'll tell you something. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and share this. We have people that know about these verses that use them against Christians. I'm serious. We have them here every week. We have them come in these doors every week. We have them call on the phone every week. Sometimes as many as four or five different people a day because they say and they know just about this much about God's Word, they're not willing to live God's Word, they're not willing to do God's Word, they're not even willing to go get a job, but yet they're going to come and say, you're supposed to help me. Now we help some of them, don't get me wrong, we don't help all of them. Some of them we help and we find out that everything they say is a lie. Everything that they told us is a lie. I believe that we can't enable people to be those type of people but i do believe that you and i are supposed to give to those who ask that's a tough thing do to others as you would like them to do to you we all know that we learned that as children in sunday school but i don't think we really understand what it means we're supposed to treat others better than what anybody's ever treated us. To the degree that we're supposed to treat others the way we would really hope to be treated. That we would really not expect it, but just love being treated and lifted up in a biblical, godly way. Whoop, I skipped a couple there, didn't I? I think that's where we are. If you love only those who love you, why should you get credit for that? Even sinners love those who love them. Boy, it's easy to love people that just always are making all over you and mushy, 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 isn't it? Isn't it easy to love people that are always willing to do things for you? Isn't it easy to love people that are always coming up to you and thanking you for everything even though you didn't do it? Isn't it easy to love people that always get along with you? And isn't it easy to love people that think the way you think? Well, maybe you need to, and we all need to think this, maybe when everybody thinks the way we think, maybe there's something wrong with them. Sometimes we need people to think different than we think so that God can work in and through us. But boy, it's easy to love people that are just like us. Hmm. God says, what credit do you get for that? Lost people do that. And if you do good only to those who do good to you, why should you get credit? Even sinners do that much. Well, I'll tell you, this is strong stuff here. We kind of read it just kind of flippantly and say, oh, well, that's true. Yeah, it's God's Word. Oh, yeah, that's what God's Word says. I'm not going to do it, but that's what it says. You say, oh, I would never say I wouldn't do it, but you live your life and you don't do it, so it's the same thing. It's even worse. All right, he goes on to say now in verse 34, and if you lend money only to those who can repay it, why should you get credit? Even sinners will lend to other sinners for a full return. You know why God's churches aren't getting blessed? And I say this at different ways and different times, and I believe ministries don't get blessed because we keep looking at what we can do instead of what God can do. 
We keep looking at how we can do it and try to map it all out so we can do it. Listen, if you got all the answers, it's not a work of God, it's a work of man. I see churches all the time, and by the way, we're going to take up a special offer in a couple of weeks. The Vine Church, who is in Flaherty now, they changed their name. Some of you worked there a whole lot and helping them out. We went and worked there some with a staff, and we put in things. World Changers worked there for a week. They are trying to buy the building they're in, and they need some money. Well, let me tell you, folks, we're going to take up a special offering for them in a couple of weeks because we need to be supporting new work for God. Our church is too long have set by and allowed things to be, well, if the bank can't do it or the bank won't do it, we won't do it. Let me tell you, I saw over 20,000 square feet of buildings built when we didn't have a penny because we stepped out in faith and saw what God could do in churches. I want to tell you, you and I think too small because our God's way bigger than what you and I will ever need. We think that in ministry because we say, oh, God put it on my heart to do it. But then we say, well, there's not enough to do it. Wait a second. If God put it on your heart, he'll take care of it. Verse 35 says, love your enemies. Do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. I've had two people in all my ministry that have either lent money or given money to, and that's hundreds of people that have ever paid me back. Two. A year ago, I didn't have any. I'm not doing it to, to brag, but I carry a certain amount of money around with me every month. Not to give people large sums of money because I know what they do with it. But to give people a few bucks here and there. Almost every one of them said, I'll pay you back when I get paid. Well, they don't have a job. They're never getting paid. Well, I'll take care of you when I get this money coming in. Well, you've been waiting for that money for months now. You've told me a hundred times. But God's word says, love your enemies, do good to them. Lend to them without expecting to be repaid. Any money that comes out of my pocket, cash, it does not belong to the church. It belongs to, to me. But God, I belong to him. And so that money goes out. And I have to say, I have to forget about it. You know why? I'm human. I have to give it out, not to think about it again. In verse 35 it says, Then your reward from heaven will be very great. It's not about the rewards on this earth, folks. By the way, I'm going to be preaching on giving next week, on blessings, the blessings of giving. I know right now there's a bunch of you going to get sick next week and not be here. Uh, I've only preached one other time on being blessed by giving since I've been here in four years, so don't act like it happens all the time. All right? But you and I get blessed heavenly. I can't tell you how many ways that our family, Deb and I, have been blessed over the years. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you some of those next week. He goes on to see, say, as he starts out in verse 35, then your reward from heaven will be very great, and you will truly be acting as children of the Most High, for he is kind to those who are what? Unthankful and wicked. We're his children. We're supposed to be kind to him too. Verse 36 says, you must be compassionate, just as your father is compassionate. You know, if I was God, I'd never have anything to do with me. If I was God, I'd never call me to the minister. If I was God, I would never bless me because I'm not worth blessing. And I hate to tell you, none of us are. But Jesus died for our sins, and God was compassionate on us. And God will bless us if we do what he tells us to do. Switch over to Matthew 5. Did I miss there? Verse 28. You have heard the laws that says the punishment must match the injury. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. There's a lot of Christians that still live this way. They want to be saved and forgiven of all their sins, but they don't want to give, forgive anybody else of anything. 
you've heard the law that says it okay, must match the injury, I get back to right, 39. But I say, do not resist, you hear this? An evil person, if someone slaps you on the right cheek, we heard this before, offer up the other cheek also. He goes on to say in verse 40, if you are sued in court and your shirt is taken from you, it gives you another way of looking at this, give your coat too. If a soldier demands, in that time a soldier could have demanded for you to do something. That isn't the way it is anymore, but in biblical time, that would have been the case. All right, demands you to carry his gear for a mile, carry it two miles. We live in a day today, if anybody said anything to us that even had authority over us, we wouldn't do it. Matter of fact, folks, let me, and, and matter of fact, William shared this with me a couple of weeks ago about a pastor to use this passage talking about face masks. I hadn't thought about that before. But it's kind of the same thing. Even though, we don't dis, even though we disagree with it, if it's somebody that has authority of any kind, and that soldier would have authority to ask you to walk an extra mile, then you walk two miles, you even go further. So think about it that way. We honor God whenever we do this. Even if we, don't dis, even if we disagree with it, it doesn't matter what you and I think. It matters about being obedient to a holy God. In verse 42 it says, Give to those who ask and don't turn away from those who want to borrow. Now I know there's some people hear this and they're going to go right after you borrow. And let me tell you something, you're wrong, you're out of God's will because that's not what these verses are about. That you and I should be beggars before everybody else. I want to tell you something, I have a problem giving people on the street, and there's a bunch of them in Elizabethtown that sit on the streets begging all the time. Whenever I counted the other day over 20 businesses between Radcliffe and just E-Town that had help wanted signs on them. My Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. Well, those people can't work, Pastor. No, the Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. You can go ahead and clap for that if you want to. That's, I, saw, I heard a couple of you start. That, I didn't want to put you out there. That's the Bible. That's God's Word. That's what it says. That you have heard the law that says love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. In verse 45 it says, In that way you will be acting as true Christians your, of your Father in heaven. I don't, I've said many times, that fruit on us, you and I have to act more like Jesus for people to see Jesus in us. And that's what these verses are saying. For he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike see sometimes our lives get a little things going wrong in them too but guess what our answers in jesus the unjust don't have answers 46 says if you love only those who love you same thing we've heard before what reward is there for that even corrupt tax collectors. Now he's getting right down to the nitty gritty. That's about the worst thing you could have been in biblical days. Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. Verse 47. If you are kind only to the, your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. He goes on to say, but you are to be perfect even as your father in heaven is perfect i'm going to go back to luke you know that verse we just read you're to be perfect where well, your father in heaven is perfect a lot of us what satan's already telling us nobody's perfect that's an excuse and a lie from the pits of hell god's word says that we can be because he is now that doesn't mean it's easy it's hard but we have to strive to be Saying I'm not perfect is an, making an excuse that is not a good excuse. In Luke 6, 37, going back, it says, Do not judge others, and you will not be judged. Kind of what I talked about at the very beginning of this. Do not condemn them, or it will all come back against you. That's some pretty heavy stuff. We need to think about it. Forgive others, and you will be forgiven. 
Give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together to make room for more, running over and poured into your lap. You see, that's what I've seen in my life. That's the reason I'm so, I get so excited about being blessed because God does bless us when you and I do what God's Word says in this one verse right here. Whenever we give to Him the way His Word says and we're faithful to Him, I want to tell you, God takes care of things. Verse 38, it says, The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Woo! How you like that? I know some of you right now say, well, I tried that once. I didn't get much back. That's because you tried it. You didn't live it. That's because it was a small time. It wasn't a lifestyle. But when you make it a lifestyle, as Jesus' word says when he tells us to test him, I want to tell you, God blesses your life. I'm going to go back to that one. It's kind of like that, that rich man. Now, this is not a true story, of course. But that rich man that went to heaven and he had this little bitty mansion and one of his servants had this huge mansion in heaven and of course the rich man said well that's not fair look at everything i had on the earth and and all that and saint peter told him we can only work with what you send us i want to tell you something folks the blessings in our life can only we can only be blessed to the point that god can bless us by our obedience to almighty god then Jesus gave the following illustration. Can one blind person lead another one? Won't they both fall into a ditch? Students are not greater than their teacher, but the student who is fully trained will become like the teacher. He goes on. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you got a log in your own? You know, I've seen so many people in my life trying to help everybody else out, but they can't help themselves because they're messed up. Sometimes we need to understand what we need to work on is who we are in Christ so that once we get right, then God can use us to help work on everybody else. But you see, we have to get right first. You and I have to get right first before God can use us to help everybody else. But we always think we can help them. It's just like this verse is very obvious. Let me help get the speck out of your eye when you got a log in your own eye. I want to tell you something. I wonder sometimes about all those places. My wife had all kinds of surgery on one of her eyes and we, in Hawaii when we were there. And I remember we will forget driving up to that doctor's office and it said for parking spots for the seeing impaired. And I'm thinking, that is a stupid sign parking lot or parking spot for the scene in Paris. So I asked the doctor because of the way I am, why in the world? He said, well, of course they have to have somebody drive them here. <laughs> yes, true. But I was thinking the other way. But folks, the problem is you and I start looking at, we have things going on in our life, but we want to fix it for everybody else. We want to fix everybody else. But let me tell you, our job is to get us fixed. Our job is to allow God to do a work within us like never before. How can you think of saying, friend, let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye when you can't see past the log in your own eye? Hypocrite. First, get rid of the log in your own eye. Then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye you see God's very plain there his word is very plain you see you and I need to quit worrying about everybody else and worry about where we stand with the Holy God first of all you and I need to make sure that we know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior matter of fact there's people that say and very many people I believe in that say less than 20 percent of people in the church are saved you say, oh, how can that be? That's impossible. No, I've studied it now for about 30 years. I don't think it's only, I don't think it's impossible. We got people that come to church that believe they're right with God, but yet they do nothing for God, never serve God, or never want to get their own life right with God so that they might be used by God to help others. 
God's Word, we just read it. We just talked about it. These are some of the hardest verses to apply to your life in God's Word. Every time somebody accuses me of something or every time somebody says something wrong about me, I have to get on my knees before a holy God and say, God, show me. Show me the truth and what's been said because, God, I'm going to honor you. That's hard because I'm pretty quick mouth and I want to just come back at them. But God keeps me from doing it. And I have to get on my knees before God and say, God, forgive me. God, help me. I didn't mean it this way, but even though I meant it this way, it was perceived this way, and I didn't mean it to be perceived this way. God, forgive me. God, change me. The way I came across to those people was wrong, Lord. Forgive me. God, forgive me because, God, I want to live for you and give my life to you so that, Lord, you can use me. Now, let me ask you, don't you want God to use you today? For that to happen, we've got to finally say, Lord, I need you to fix me, Lord. I need you to take the log out of my eye. I need you to focus on my relationship with you, O oh Lord, that I might be who you created me to be in you, so that, Father, I might be more effective for you. We're going to have a time of invitation in just a moment, and Corey's going to come and play and lead us in song and i'm gonna i know people have been staying away from the from the altar lately and right before this pandemic i believe it's a way that satan's attacked the church he's kept people away from altars he's kept people away from each other you don't have to get within 600 feet of somebody good grief you can get on one of the sides and pray but i'd ask you to make us who we need to be in christ today we know what's wrong in our lives God's already showed us we're not willing many times to get it right with him. Would you be willing to come and get it right with him today? Would you be willing to come and say, God, I need you more than I've ever needed you right now, Lord, because I am not who I need to be in you. Are you willing to do whatever God asks you to do? Obey his spirit promptly when he speaks to your heart. Some of us right now, Satan's already robbed it. He stole the joy out of your life, and he's trying to steal your life itself. Would you give it over to God today and said, Satan, you have no right. God is the answer to all things in my life. I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to lead us in a short word of prayer. Now I'm just going to ask you to step out and come. Maybe you need to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Maybe you need to rededicate that life. Maybe you need to come today and just spend some time in prayer. Maybe you know there's some junk going on that, well, you haven't been godly yet need to get right with that that God can make you who he created you to be in him heavenly father we thank you for your word today and father these passages Jesus you spoke them to, to us it's not just things we should look at and say they're good but Lord it's things that we should apply 100% to our lives and they're hard to apply because it's not easy in this old world to get along with people and it's not easy to get along with everybody and it's definitely not easy Lord to walk a Christian walk in a world like we live in today. But Father, I pray that you would help us, that you would bless us. And these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Would you step out and come as we sing?